First of all, if you like to know more about the course, uh, of course uh, we can go into SIS, uh, your favorite system currently, I guess. Uh, uh, maybe not, uh, please don't tell me I'm vice dean for study at first. If you don't like it, <laughs> I will not like you too. Uh, so, but if you will go into student information system and uh, you will find our subject, uh, it means you will enter the code JSM 406. You will get all necessary information uh, about uh, the subject itself. So, first of all, I think uh, it's necessary to say that this is only introduction to statistics and introduction to SPSS. You will not become masters of statistics as well as SPSS after one semester, believe me. Statisticians study statistics for whole their life, not only for one semester. So uh, here you have basic information uh, which are necessary, uh, but I will not go uh, through the content as uh, we will uh, do it later. But what is necessary to say, what is literature? So if you will be missing, you will like to know more about the topic. So the basic textbook for this course is from Andy Field. This is a very famous guy and uh, I would like uh, to repeat the information that Enderfield itself uh, wrote in his book that uh, he had grade uh, five or F uh, from mathematics, I guess, uh, at elementary school, but then he is one of the best teachers of statistics in SPSS, so it's not uh, related to maths uh, to be successful in statistics, I would say. This is a very big one book. Uh, Currently, it has more than 800 pages, but uh, don't be afraid, uh, uh, slightly less than one half is important for our course and the rest is postponed to other courses, so you don't have to read it. Uh, everything, uh, there are three uh, issues, uh, 2000, 2006 and 2009. Uh, uh, I will let you know by email how to get an uh, electronic copy of the textbook and there are also some uh, printed copy in library, I guess. So that's end the field. Uh, if you like to know something more technical, so I would say that the best book uh, I have ever read about SPSS is from Mariano Ruches. Uh, it was one of uh, ladies who were developing software itself. So she knows nearly everything about the software. Uh, here you have quote about SPSS 13, uh, but currently there are newer versions, but still these books uh, are very, very useful for you if you like to know more about uh, technical details. And for Czech students, I have also, I hope, uh, uh, quite uh, pleasant information. Uh, we have just published uh, with my colleagues uh, from uh, Faculty of uh, Social Studies in Brno, a book which is called, in English, Analysis of Social Science Data in SPSS. Of course, it is called in Czech, Analyza Sociálně Vědních Dat. And uh, if you like uh, to uh, learn at home and uh, to do more advanced, so it's quite nice book. And uh, I can also announce that uh, it will be promoted by, I guess, 350 crowns at our department. So I will let you know if you like to buy it. Uh, uh, of course, I do not have to force you to buy it as you can say, no, 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 this is revenue for our teacher, it's not good. So decide alone, but it's possibility for Czech students to read also in Czech language. So basic requirements uh, for this course are very easy, I guess. Every week I will assign you homework, usually quite easy task, very similar to task we will do here together. And then it is expected that you will send your homework next Monday noon, that's deadline. If you send it later, I will give you feedback, but no points for homework. And uh, you should do at least eight homework, eight assignments, and each can be maximum for five points. And then there will be final exam uh, at the end of semester. If you are here for Erasmus, of course, uh, I will be so kind and will let you know uh, to write a test before Christmas so you can leave for Christmas and never come back to the Czech Republic. Uh, uh, for other students, uh, there will be uh, exam dates in January as well as in February. So you will have uh, at least five or six uh, opportunities to write the test. The test is 
totally practical test. So it will be only based on practicing in SPSS interpretation of results. No theory is included in the test, as I do believe that statistics and data analysis is mainly practical discipline. And if student will learn some formulas, equations, etc., he will lose it in a few minutes. But if you will do something practically, you will repeat it, you will know it for your whole, all your life. So uh, here you have final grades, but that's not necessary to comment uh, uh, currently. Uh, and uh, one note I would like to add. If you are not still familiar with methodology of social science research, you have never visited course which is called something like social science research, or you have never read a book which is called social science research, you do not know anything about research, please try to read at least some short books uh, and to know something about research. I will explain some basics, but I will not go into details about questionnaire, uh, individual types of data, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are not familiar with this topic, please try to read at least some text, or of course you can watch some video at YouTube. They are very good, I guess. Okay, so uh, what are main goals? of this course. I would say there is quite a lot of stuff for us, but still I hope so. It will be very pleasant for all of you. So I would like to introduce you into social science statistics. So it will not be general statistic, but statistics mainly for those who are studying social sciences. So it will be slightly biased, I would say, in comparison with general statistical course. And I would like also to invite you to a SPSS environment. I will give you a short review of main statistical software environments at the end of our lecture. But believe me, SPSS is not the only one package we can use. A colleague from Mannheim can help us with other names. But uh, we are uh, <coughs> using SPSS mainly at the Faculty of Social Sciences as it is also in Czech social science, uh, in academy, the most widespread software, that's why we are preparing students in this software. So, uh, I hope so, that final result will be that you will be able to analyze your own data, it means data from your research or another one's research, for your purpose. For example, you will be preparing something for your thesis. So, it's up to you. And of course, it's only introduction to statistics as well as in SPSS. So if you like to know something more, to go further, to find some advanced topics, you have to follow some advanced courses. I teach some courses at our uh, Institute of Sociological Studies, and more courses uh, can be found at Institute of Economic Studies at our faculty. So if you like to know more, follow these courses, but only very uh, pleasant warning to all of you, if you will go to Institute of Economic Studies, they expect usually you know quite a lot from maths, as they study maths at a bachelor degree uh, for four semesters. So first of all, you have to include some maths. I will try to nearly avoid all maths equations, as maybe it will not be totally possible, but I will try to do my best. So, wait a minute for next slide. It's complicated. No reaction. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can ask. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so. So let's start with introduction to statistic. So, uh, first of all, I would like to mention that if you say statistics, there are more than one meaning possible. So let's try to guess what can be covered by this expression. If you hear statistics, what's your ideas? What is behind? Okay, so getting some information, okay. Some more ideas about meaning of statistics? Boring subject. Boring for teachers as well as for students, you said. Okay, it can be. Yeah, can be, can be. I would say that at least three possible meanings uh, we can cover by statistics. The easiest and original meaning would be that statistic 
is some activity by which you collect data. Then it can be some very easy handling of data, such as producing charts, tables, and then maybe at the top of the meanings would be it is very specific academic discipline with many equations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we will try to combine all these three branches together, but only at the lowest level, believe me. Okay, and now the question is mainly for social science students whether it is important for us and why it can be important to study statistics. What do you know and what do you think about this? Helps us see patterns that emerge. Okay, so we can see something in the data, okay. Some other hints. Or it's just ways of representing information you collected. Yeah, yeah. I would say very easily, if you would like to know something about society, you have to perform some research and you have two possible uh, ways how to perform research at least, quantitative and qualitative. And if you would like to go in quantitative way, you have to use at least some statistics to understand your results. And if you would like to know something about society, if you are a social scientist, you need something to know and to apply. So it seems it's important. Uh, the next question is whether it is difficult or why it can be difficult to learn and apply statistics as well. Is it or not? What do you think? At the beginning, I can ask you also the same questions at the end and we can compare results. Yeah? There could be some bias that you as a researcher have when you're looking at data and yeah. wanting to interpret it the way that um, will best fit your kind of question that you're trying mm -hmm. to answer? Okay. Okay, so I would say that in general statistics is not the easiest subject, but if you will follow only a very easy way of something what I would maybe call not statistics, but data analysis, so it can be quite easy to understand. Uh, so I hope so, it will not be so difficult for you. And uh, the question for you, I will not try to force you to answer is whether it is boring so you can answer after the first lecture and also at the end of semester, etc. Et <laughs> so, first of all, uh, only uh, some philosophical insight into statistics. So to have some broader picture of statistics itself to know uh, whether we are going to and which branches will be nearly omitted in this course. So something like map of all statistics. So I would say there are three basic branches, but uh, you can see uh, in the next slide there are maybe more branches, but these are three main branches of statistics. For the first insight into your data, we use something what we call descriptive statistics. Uh, we will discuss about it uh, today and also next two lectures. And what does it mean? Usually, if we are asking some questions about society, that's the beginning. So statistics can be rephrased as answering to some questions about society or about biological systems, etc., etc. So first of all, you have some question. Then you would like to perform your research and usually we do not have possibility to find answers from all people, for example, in the Czech Republic or from the whole people in the whole world. It's time consuming, money consuming, etc., etc. It's impossible. So we replace this big population by something what we call sample. Sample is one of the first expressions or terms which you should remember. Uh, in Czech, it's Vibier. Uh, and you use the sample, for example, of people in social scientists, and you ask only a sample of these selected people, and then you will describe your results by descriptive statistics. That's its purpose. Describe your data only. Then there is some special part of the statistics, and I know that mathematicians would disagree, it's part of uh, stats, and they would say that it's part of mass. It's called probability. There's very special discipline, which is uh, originated some very middle ages, especially in risky games. So if you are a fan of risky games, and you know something about possible results, you are maybe quite good at probability. And usually good players 
were the first statisticians. Uh, we will not discuss about computing probabilities and probability rules uh, quite a lot, so we will nearly omit this topic, but if you like to be familiar, so I can recommend this book, uh, which is John Hay, Probability, very short introduction. This Oxford uh, edition of uh, very short introduction is very nice, and in 80 pages, and you can see very small pages, you can find basic information and many, many nice illustrations from Risky Games. So you can read more about it. And then the next part is called sometimes mathematical statistics, sometimes statistical inference, and you can find uh, many more expressions for this part of statistics. And the main goal of this mathematical statistics, it will cover the second part of the semester of this course, you can find the question, okay, if you know something about your sample and you would like to generalize your results to the whole population to go back, as first of all, you draw some sample from population and you would like to infer generalized results from the uh, sample to the population, so you can ask for some formulas and equations from mathematical statistics. And it will give you some hints. We will call these uh, tools as statistical tests and confidence intervals, and they can help you to generalize your results and go back to the population results. As usually, imagine following case. For example, Czech government will ask you to perform research about opinions of Czech people about immigrants. And you will say, okay, 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 I know something about research, I will perform it, I will select randomly 1,000 people, blah, blah, blah. And then you will collect data, you will analyze data, you will have some descriptive statistics, but Czech government is not asking you what is the result for these 1,000 people, but what is the result for the whole Czech uh, population, maybe for all adults, etc., etc. So you have to go back to the population. So there are also some special branches of statistics, so only to have some idea. A very uh, nice is uh, something what is called sampling theory. So how to select people or biological organisms, etc., etc., in other disciplines, it can be uh, found in sampling theory books. It's very huge theory and uh, people who are interested in sampling theory do nothing else in their life, only sampling theory. So it's uh, any little discipline currently. In econometrics, uh, for example, some special branch of statistics is called time series analysis. So you analyze some uh, data from the past and try to forecast for the future. That's the main goal for, of time series analysis. And there are many, many other special branches of statistics, but we will not cover these, so only this information is enough. And here we are, and the first part of the statistic we will cover is introduction to descriptive statistics. So now it's beginning of the first lecture itself. So first concept we have to discuss and we have to understand it's variable. In Czech, proměna, uh, variable. So if I say variable, what does it mean? How would you explain the expression variable? Change. Some phenomenon, and if I would use something like definition, I would say that can have at least two possible values. Something that can have at least two values. Okay, what is opposite of variable? Something what is not changing, if I rephrase your definition? Constant. Yeah, constant. So if we, for example, ask all of us here, if we are participants of uh, statistics in SPSS course, so our answer or this phenomenon would be constant. As all people here are included in the course statistics in SPSS. But if I will ask you, for example, about your major in your studies, these answers will be different and it's variable. Here I would uh, maybe uh, offer the first definition of statistics, that statistics is science about variables. If something is constant, statistician or statistics is not uh, <coughs> covered as 
there is nothing important. If something is constant, there is no place for statistics. So we can call statistics as the discipline which is interested in variables. So some example of uh, variables. So we discussed branch of study can be some other phenomenon that can be measured as variables, some ideas, before we will go further. Nationality. Nationality. Can be, yeah, yeah. Nearly everything in social science can be rephrased uh, in the vocabulary of variables. Okay, and now, and I would say this is very easy part, but especially for those who are new to statistics, uh, please follow these ideas very carefully as uh, this is something like golden rule in statistics. If you will not understand this uh, uh, typology of variables, you will not understand uh, anything from statistics. So according to measurement scales or different measurements, we can divide type of types of variables. So let's start with the first one type, which is called nominal variable. The name itself is derived from Latin, from nomen, and it seems to us, okay, if it is nominal, so it is based on names. So let's start with some example and with properties of nominal variables. So individual values for nominal variable can be explained or expressed by names. And the second rule is that if the variable is nominal by its measurement scale, so it can be only distinguished between two values, whether they are same or not, but values cannot be ordered from the lowest to the highest. So you are not allowed to perform any ranking. So some examples of nominal variable something that can be expressed only by names and cannot be ranked from the lowest to the highest. Yeah. Gender, Gender uh, especially currently in the 21st century, I would say maybe if we would go into the past, uh, there would be some ranking, okay? No, that's not the joke, that's uh, social science reality. Okay, but gender, yeah. You have only two possible values, uh, male and female, and if somebody is male, it is only another value than female. And that's all we can say. For example, your major in study is also nominal. Of course, maybe you do believe if you study political science, you study maybe more than somebody who studies sociology, but believe me, that's nominal variable from statistical point of view. So that's nominal variable. And now, uh, the first uh, rule in statistic is that for nominal variables, we have only quite few procedures we can perform. So if statistician finds some nominal variable, he is quite sad as he knows that all the magic he or she can do is only very limited with nominal variables. So we have only very small number of procedures. If we go further, so the next type and it's better from statistical point of view to have ordinal variable from Latin order. So it means there can be some order. So if you compare ordinal and nominal variable, it's very easy. Also usually individual values can be expressed by names, but these individual values can be sorted by their value from the lowest to the highest. But there is no natural step between individual values which is the same. So some examples. Yeah. Grades can be, grades can be but uh, maybe it's slightly more problematic. We will discuss later. Uh, the highest level of education, it can be. Yeah, for example, if you have some basic, then some uh, maybe secondary, then maybe tertiary, and also we can uh, differentiate between bachelor, master, etc., etc. So these educational levels are classically ordinal. So we can sort them from the lowest to the highest value. But the rule is that for ordinal variables, you are not allowed to subtract individual values, even if they are expressed as numbers. So now only short excursus into coding 
of individual values for variables, especially uh, for statistical software. So if we use nominal variables, classical example, gender, as you said. So if you have gender and you have two possible options as male and female, so usually you start coding with one, two, etc., etc. So classical coding, for example, of uh, statistical data and statistical software, which you can find is that one is, for example, male and two is female. Sometimes you can find opposite order, but order doesn't matter as this nominal variable. So that's classical coding. So in data, you will find only one and twos instead of description male and female. As you will see next time, it is much easier to write one and two instead of male and female. Let's try to type male and female and one, two, and you know what's the difference. So that's classical example of uh, nominal variable coding. If you have ordinal variable coding, uh, it's nearly the same. For example, if we go back uh, to uh, the level of achieved education. So for example, the first one can be elementary. The second one can be secondary. The third one can be tertiary. And of course, we can differentiate more. So usually, we use these one, two, threes for coding of individual values. We usually do not use zero in data coding. But still, these codes are totally artificial. It's your decision to use these codes. These are not figures at all. So you cannot subtract, uh, sum, divide, multiply them, etc., etc. And now, we will skip to the last one type. And uh, there is uh, a little bit uh, uh, discussion about the correct name for this type. But for this lecture, I will call them cardinal or scale. Sometimes you can differentiate between interval and ratio, but uh, it doesn't uh, have any meaning for this course. And cardinal variable is the best one for statistician, as you can compare two values and say that one is another than second one. For example, uh, if we will have example for cardinal variable like age of respondent, so if somebody is in uh, the uh, survey 40 years old and somebody uh, 20 years old, they are not of the same age. So we do the same procedures for nominal variables. We can also rank them. One is older, one is younger. And we can also compare the difference between these two uh, people. 14 minus 20 is 20. So you can also find the difference. And once again, if you go back for nominal variables, there is only few procedures you can perform. For ordinal, you can add something more, and the most of statistical procedures fits to cardinal variables. So if you go down, down, you have more and more available statistical procedures. So cardinal variables are the best for statisticians. And if we would discuss about this topic maybe 50 years ago, I would say, okay, there is nearly no procedure for nominal, nearly no procedure for ordinal, and nearly all statistical procedures are only about cardinal. So development for ordinal and uh, uh, cardinal, uh, ordinal and nominal uh, variables uh, statistics uh, is uh, especially in the last 50 years. The last one comment uh, for this uh, typology is that sometimes nominal and ordinal variables are together, together called as uh, categorical. So sometimes you can find label categorical variables, and it means nominal and ordinal together. One more comment for cardinal variables. If you imagine you would like to add some coding for cardinal variables, it doesn't make sense, as the value itself has the information. So if you are 40 years old, only 40 is the information. You do not have to add label he or she is 40 years old. So we do not use any coding for cardinal data. And are there any questions about types of variables? Is it clear? Yeah? Yeah, that's the reason why I'm not sure. Why do we use cardinal? Because it's too 
yeah, yeah. Uh, interval and ratio uh, and typology is not necessary for statistical procedures which we'll be using. Only differentiation between nominal, ordinal, and uh, interval and ratio together will be important for us. So cardinal is instead interval or ratio. So it doesn't matter for our statistical course and nearly for all statistical courses, but uh, I would say that uh, it's some residue from the past. Okay, so now the question is, what is descriptive statistics and why we use descriptive statistics? So now let's imagine quite ordinal social science survey. For example, you would select randomly 1,000 uh, check adult people and you would like to ask them about their income. So your final result would be 1,000 values, or we can say data with 1,000 values, and you can go through this 1,000 values and try to understand them. It's quite boring, time consuming, and maybe without any special result. Let's imagine you go through 1,000 values about personal income. What will be the result? Nobody knows. It's quite a huge number of figures and no result at all. That's why we use something what is called descriptive statistic or maybe we can use some summary for our values. So for example, if you will have 1,000 uh, data about personal income, you would like to use, for example, average as a representative for this data. And you would say, on average, Czech people have income, blah, blah, blah. So you would like to replace, for example, 1,000 of values by only one value, which will represent all these values, or describe, and that's why it is called descriptive statistics. Now, it's necessary to mention, and it's related to previous discussion, that if you have different types of variables, you must use different tools, not only in descriptive statistics, but also in more advanced inference statistics. So first of all, if you like to describe your data, you must know whether you have nominal, ordinal, or cardinal data. And then decide which procedure you will use. So, here we go, and uh, we have uh, at least four, or here you see only three categories as uh, the last two are merged on this slide, three categories how to describe your data. Usually, and it is most common, we use something what we call central tendency. The question behind is, what is typical value for my variable? For example, if you have data about income, you can ask about the average, and it can be seen as typical income in the Czech Republic. We will discuss later that uh, average income and average in general is not maybe the best indicator, but it's quite often used. So we can describe central tendency, something what is in the middle, I would say, something what is typical. But we can also describe in statistics how individual values are different, how they differentiate, we call it in general as dispersion or variance. So the question is whether there are many differences or not. Let's imagine there are two populations. In one, and also second one, they have average income 20,000, for example, euro per year. But in the first population, let's call them A, all people have income 20,000 euros, but in population B, there is nobody who has income 20,000 euros, but there are some people who have nearly zero, some people who have one million, etc., etc. So there are big differences. So if you would only know about central tendency and you would like to compare this population, it would be misleading. So that's why you need also to know something about variance, about differences. And there are two more descriptive statistics which can help you to understand your data, especially if your data are cardinal, and uh, these describe distribution. 
We will discuss about uh, these in more detail next lecture, but now only short uh, representation of uh, this phenomenon. So, if, for example, you would like to draw a picture about personal income, for example, in the Czech Republic, so I guess that the picture uh, would be flowing. Here would be uh, income, and here percentage of people who are <coughs> who have uh, the amount of in individual amount of income, and the picture would be something like this one. There is quite big proportion of people with quite low income, and then the chart will be with quite long tail, as there are some people with very high income, but only a very small proportion of these people. And uh, if this distribution is not symmetric, but have quite long tail on the right side or on the left side, we call it as skewness. And also individual distributions can be different in something what is called kurtosis. It means whether there is a big peak or not. For example, you can have data like this one and also like this one. And uh, there is big peak, high kurtosis. This is quite flat, low kurtosis. And we will learn, of course, how to compute these uh, descriptive statistics such as skewness and kurtosis in SPSS environment uh, in next lectures. And the first one, what we will learn how to compute and how to describe our data, it will be quite uh, easy to guess central tendency. And uh, I think that's quite uh, easy uh, for all of you, as I hope that all these concepts are quite well known also for laymen, so you don't have to study statistical courses, but only short repetition and understanding and here I will also use some formulas as I think it will help you to understand statistical books. So, if you have nominal variable and you would like to describe some typical value, let's imagine we are, for example, uh, asking about major in this class and we are trying to find some typical value. So we can use mode, which is the most frequent value in our classroom. So if I remember well, so I guess that here the mode would be public and social policy. As the most students here enrolled study public and social policy. So to find mode is very easy. You only find frequencies of individual values and the most frequent is called mode. But uh, only a uh, very quick warning. Uh, Sometimes it can happen that for your data you can have more than one mode. It's called B model, tree model, etc., etc. distribution. And sometimes there is no mode. If all people will have different branch, excuse me, uh, study, then uh, we will have no mode at all. For nominal variables, if you like to describe typical value, you have only one option, find mode. Usually in literature, you can find this symbol for mode. X is usually used uh, for variables, and if there is a hat over it, it is mode. If you have ordinal variable, you can also use mode for description of your data. Let's imagine uh, we would, for example, ask people about uh, their highest uh, achieved level of education. It's possible to find the most frequent category. I guess in most uh, societies it would be still secondary, but maybe for future it will be tertiary education. But if you have ordinal variable, you have another option how to find typical representative or something what is called central tendency, and it is called median. If you will rank the values from the lowest to the highest, so in the middle, you can find something 
what is called medium. It's very close to the world medium, so it's something in the middle. So let's use very uh, easy uh, example. So let's have, for example, a question about number of people living in a household. So let's have, uh, for simplicity, only five households. So the first one with only one uh, person, second one, uh, two persons, uh, the next one, three, then maybe uh, four and four. So first of all, we should rank these values, but these are already sorted from the lowest to the highest. Then you make something like pairs, and in the middle, you will find median. And you will say that in our sample, Median, it means some typical value of number in the household is three. Uh, the question can be, okay, if we had even number of selected persons, household, etc., it's easy. But how to compute median if it is odd? So, for example, we will have one more household with five people living. So, pair, pair, and now there are two medians or not. Very easy statistical rule is, okay, if you have two values inside, so make average from these two. So three plus four divided by two and you will get median, three and a half in this case. So once again, if you have ordinal variables, you can use median as well as mode. Let's imagine we would like to find mode here and mode would be four, as we have two households with four members. And here we have cardinal variables, statisticians like them as we discussed previously, and for these variables, we usually compute mean or average, sometimes it is called also arithmetic average. And I think this is the concept you know, maybe from your first grade at elementary school, as everybody is averaging nearly everything. So what is average? It's quite easy. You only sum up all values which you have uh, collected in your data and then divide by the number of values you have. So in this case, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 divide by 6, as we have 6 uh, elements here. So we can compute it uh, very easily. So if I use formula, so we sum up all individual values. We usually use sum x and uh, lower index i uh, for individuals and divide by a number of elements in our sample, in our data, is usually uh, expressed by small n. So in our case, it would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus uh, 4 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 6. So it's 3, 6, 10, uh, 14, 19 divided by 6. It's quite complicated. So what is the result? So 18 divided by 6 is 3, and then we have 1, 6. So if we use uh, some decimal places, so it's 3, 0.1, 6, 6, 6, up to infinity. So approximately we can round up and we can say that in our data, uh, number of members in the family is 3.2. Uh, if we would like to use symbol, so for average or uh, mean, we use uh, this symbol. And for median, excuse me, uh, I have forgotten, uh, x with wave is median, usually in a statistic or literature. But of course, we will do not use these symbols uh, and SPSS will say median is blah, 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 mean is blah, 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 uh, or mode is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and once again, if we go back into logic of statistical procedures, for cardinal variable, you can compute mean 
as well as median, as well as mode. But sometimes mode uh, is uh, <coughs> not very useful for cardinal variables. If you have all individual values different, so there is no mode in this data. But at least mean and median can be used uh, for all cardinal variables very easily. If you have ordinal variables, you can use median and mode. And if you have nominal variables, only mode can be used. Of course, technically, you can compute uh, for nominal variable mean if you have coding one, two, blah, blah, blah. From statistical point of view, it's nonsense. But software will not say, no, 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 I will not compute it for you. It's nonsense. Software will compute it. And then you will interpret it, and you will do a mistake. And now, the last one chart I would like uh, to draw is a description of the problem related to mean and median, and especially uh, mean is slightly problematic. Once again, if we go back to the example of uh, income, so once again, on x-axis, there is a level of income and uh, y-axis is proportion of people with individual level of income. And let's take, for example, some data uh, from Czech Republic, Germany, as well as the US. So the distribution will be, once again, skewed, as we discussed previously. So if you will try to compute average income or arithmetic average or mean, so it will be maybe here. So it's average. But if we will try to compute median, as it is not so influenced by these big values, it will be maybe approximately here. So in this case, if there is long tail on the right side, such as income distribution, you will find that median is much lower, or lower at least, than mean. And uh, if you find official statistics, and usually uh, government reports, what is mainly published? Average mean or median uh, income? Average or median income? What is mainly published in newspapers and the internet? Huh? In the Czech Republic, nearly nobody would say something about median. It's not a very nice report, as it is quite low in comparison with average. And also, it can happen. Only one manager can increase his salary, and average will be also increased. But median will be still the same. So, uh, but it's great, nice uh, to know that if you see some descriptive statistics and you know what is the value of average and median, and you know that median is below average, so the distribution behind can be like this shape. Opposite situation is, of course, very straightforward to guess. Uh, excuse me. There will be tail at the beginning and then the top. And for this data, of course, if you will compute average, it will be somewhere here. But median will be higher. So you can find whether your data are skewed to the left or to the right only by comparison of median and mean. And if, and sometimes it can happen, you will see that median is nearly or the same as mean, so it seems that your data are symmetric. So it means that on the left side and right side, there is nearly the same quantity of the data. And that's the magic of descriptive statistics, I would say, that you know only mean and median, and you know quite a lot about distribution of your data, only by two figures. Let's imagine you have data about 100,000 people. And instead of it, you have two figures, and you have quite a nice idea about the picture which you can draw from your data. 
So here we go uh, to the uh, very short excursus about statistical software. So the question is, what is statistical software? So it's some special tool which we can use at our computers for descriptive statistics, inference statistics, and many, many other branches. I would say that we can divide statistical software into two very broad categories, generalized and specialized software, uh, we will discuss later. And there are also, of course, other tools for stats. Uh, for example, for this course, it would be enough to have Microsoft Excel installed at your computer, and every magic we will go through is included in Microsoft Excel. Only outputs wouldn't be so nice as in SPSS or other uh, softwares. So here is a short preview of general statistical software. What does it mean general? It means it can perform usually hundreds of procedures. Nearly all statistics is covered in these general statistical packages. So the first one, but uh, I'm not the angel who is saying there is nothing else, uh, but the first one as we will use it is IBM SPSS statistic. As you can see, it's covered by IBM, big international corporation, uh, and currently uh, the newest version is version 23. Uh, I will send you a link uh, where you can find software downloaded and uh, you can read more about the software itself. Uh, in academic, uh, environment, especially uh, in the US as well as uh, in the western part of Europe, uh, the mostly widespread software uh, is Stata, currently version 14. Uh, it's quite fantastic that in Stata, in comparison with SPSS, you can add your own procedures, which is called do files, and to offer them to another users. So it's quite slightly open system in comparison with IBM SPSS, which is totally closed, and you are not allowed to enter into its codes. The big system, uh, which is also present, uh, for example, at our faculty, is SAS, uh, currently version 10. And I would say it's not only for start, it's a um, system for managing decisions, and it's mainly for professionals. For example, in the Czech Republic, SAS is present only in big uh, bank, uh, insurance companies, and uh, uh, in mobile uh, world. Uh, no other companies are not allowed, as it is quite uh, expensive software to buy it. Uh, also quite widespread software and uh, very nice graphics included in it is called Statistica currently version uh, 12, and for Czech students I can say this is the only software which is fully in Czech language. In SAS some outputs are in Czech, uh, in Statist Statistica there are all outputs in Czech, all the softwares are only in English, uh, <coughs> Polish, etc., etc. And if you are a fan of uh, software which is free of charge and you can change the codes and add your codes, so you will go into our project, uh, which is the best one, as usually the best mathematicians and statisticians all over the world, uh, if they Im uh, invent new procedure, they will implement it into R, uh, and it can be downloaded for free. But of course, the graphics of this R project as it is free is slightly worse than uh, uh, graphics for these commercial packages. Specialized statistical software is usually for one procedure or family of uh, very close approaches, uh, and it's not very, very uh, widespread to use these softwares, but uh, I can give you one example. For example, IBM serves software which is called AMOS for some procedures which I'll call structural, structural equation modeling. Uh, please uh, do not try to understand it at the beginning of your studies, but maybe later uh, you will use these procedures and uh, you will find that AMOS can be useful for you as well. And other tools for stats, I would say, mainly spreadsheets you can use. Uh, so at least uh, we have uh, two options. If you are a fan of Microsoft Office and Bill Gates, so you'll say, okay, Excel, that's my favorite. And there are functions included. There is also free and uh, it's a pre-installed uh, data analysis tool, very nice. And it's nearly the same as SPSS, I would say. There are many add-ins, many are free, Many uh, are commercial and you have to pay for it. But uh, some of these add-ins for Excel are fantastic and you can use them instead of uh, classical statistical software. 
then if you use OpenOffice instead of Microsoft Office, uh, you know maybe Calc, and this Calc is slightly limited as uh, it uh, included only functions for Microsoft Excel. There are no add-ins, etc. So from statistics, if we compare Calc and Excel, Excel is much better. But it's not uh, trying to force you to buy Microsoft Excel instead of uh, Calc, which is free of charge. And all stats which we will go through can be computed by Microsoft Excel or Calc. Uh, only outputs wouldn't be so nice as we will see in SPSS environment. So, and the last one slide is about your homework. I think it's quite easy, but we are at the beginning, so you must be enthusiastic and must try to uh, give you very easy uh, assessment in the beginning. So, please try to describe three variables of three different types. It means one will be nominal, one ordinal, and one cardinal. And for nominal and ordinal variables, which you will uh, try to add uh, to your homework, try to define possible values. So it means possible answers. Uh, and uh, the last one comment uh, for homework is that you should do all your homework in Microsoft Word or OpenOffice. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, so it should be one document. Uh, usually, please use your surname as the name of the file and add one, two, three, four, five uh, as uh, and the number for your homework. And sh this file, doesn't matter whether it will be Microsoft Office or OpenOffice file, should be sent by email uh, by Monday noon, that's deadline for the evaluation of your homework. So, thanks for your attention, and uh, if there are any questions, feel free to ask me this time. And of course, I hope that you will not remove this course from your list and you will be here also for the next time as you will not be persuaded that statistic is only boring and for nothing and also teacher is boring and maybe bored also from <laughs> statistics. Okay, so are there any questions? Okay, no questions. So I can promise I will send you a link about the software uh, and uh, Next presentation for the next lecture, I will try uh, to upload in SIS, so before every lecture, you should have presentation for the lecture. And according to my opinion, but of course, uh, it's your decision, it's worth uh, to download the presentation and make notes uh, directly into the presentation. That's maybe the easiest way, but it's up to you. So thank you very much, and uh, I will be looking forward to you next week. Bye. <laughs>